Is there a particular security vulnerability that worries you the most, that you think about the most in terms of it being a really hard problem and a really important problem to solve? So it is very interesting. Uh, so I have in the past have worked uh, essentially through the oh, through the different stacks in the systems, um, working on networking security, software security, and even in software security, there is I worked on program binary uh, security and then web security, mobile security. So so throughout we have been developing more and more. Uh, techniques and tools to improve security of these software systems. And as a consequence, actually, it's a very interesting thing that we are seeing, uh, interesting trends that we are seeing, is that the attacks are actually moving more and more from the systems itself yeah. towards to humans. So it's moving up the stack. It's moving up the stack. That's fascinating. And, and also it's moving more and more towards what we call the weakest link. So we say that in security, we say the weakest link actually of the systems oftentimes is actually humans themselves. Um, so a lot of attacks, for example, the attack either through social engineering or from these other methods, they actually attack the humans and then attack the systems. So we actually have uh, projects that actually works on how to use AI machine learning to help uh, humans to defend oh, against these type of attacks. So, so yeah, so if we look at humans as security vulnerabilities, is there is th is there methods? Is that what you're kind of referring to? Is there hope or methodology for uh, patching the humans? I think in the future, this is going to be really more and more of a serious issue because again, for uh, for machines for systems, we can yes, we can patch them, we can build more secure systems. We can harden them and so on. But humans, actually, we don't have a way to, say, do a software upgrade. I'll do a hardware <laughs> change <laughs> for humans. And so, for example, right now, um, we, you know, we already see uh, different types of attacks. Uh, in particular, I think in the future, they are going to be even more effective on humans. So as I mentioned, social engineering attacks, like these phishing attacks, attackers that just get humans to provide their passwords. And there have been instances where even places like um, Google and other places um, that are supposed to have really good security, people there have been fished to actually wire money to attackers. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. And then also we talk about this deep fake and fake news. So these essentially are there to target humans, to manipulate humans' uh, opinions, uh, 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 perceptions and so on. Um, so I think in going to the future, these are going to become more and more uh, severe further, issues for further us. Further up the stack. Yes, yes. So, so you see kind of social engineering, automated social engineering as a kind of security vulnerability. Oh, absolutely. And again, uh, given that humans are the weakest link to the system, I, I would say this is a type of attacks that I would be... <laughs> Worried. Most worried about? Oh, that's fascinating. Okay, so... <laughs> and that's why when we talk about AI sites, also we need AI to help humans too. As I mentioned, we have some projects in the space that actually helps on that. Can you, can you maybe, can we go there for the GF? Sure, uh, sure, sure. Well, what are some ideas so one to of help the humans? Right, so one of the projects we are working on is actually using NLP and chatbot uh, techniques to help humans, for example. Uh, the chatbot actually could be there observing the conversation between a user and a remote uh, correspondent. Mm -hmm. And then the chatbot could be there to try to uh, observe, to see whether the correspondent is potentially an attacker. Mm -hmm. For example, in some of the phishing attacks, the attacker claims to be a relative of the user and the, and the relative got lost in London and his you know, wallets have been stolen, had no money as the user to wire money. To, to send money to the attacker, right. um, or to the, to the correspondent. Uh, so then in this case, the chatbot actually could try to recognize uh, there may be something suspicious going on. Uh, this relates to asking money to be sent. And also uh, the chatbot could actually pose, uh, we call it challenge and response. The correspondent claims to be a relative of the user. Then the chatbot could automatically actually generate some kind of challenges to see whether the correspondent knows the appropriate knowledge to prove that he actually is, he or she actually is the acclaimed uh, uh, 
you know, relative of the user. Uh, so in the future, I think uh, these type of technologies actually could help protect users. That's funny. So get so a chatbot that's kind of focused for looking the, for the kind of patterns that are usually usually associated with social engineering attacks. Right. It would be able to then test, sort of uh, do a basic capture type of uh, response to see is this is the factual the semantics of the claims you're making true. Right, right, exactly. That's fascinating. Exactly. That's and really then, fascinating. And as we develop, you know, more powerful NLP and chatbot techniques, uh, the chatbot could even engage further conversations with the correspondence to, for example, if uh, it turns out to be an you know an attack, then the 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 chatbot can try to engage in conversations with the attacker to try to learn more information from the attacker as well. So it's a very interesting area. So that chatbot is essentially your your little representative in the space in the security space. It's like right. your little lawyer that protects you from doing anything stupid. <laughs> anything stupid. Right, yeah, right, right. That's a fascinating vision for the future. Uh, do you see that broadly applicable across the web? So you, across oh, all yes, your interactions right, on the absolutely. web? Absolutely, right. What about like on social networks, for example? So, so across all of that, do you see that being implemented in uh, sort of th that's a service that a company would provide or does every single social network has to implement it themselves? So Facebook and Twitter and so on, or do you see there being like a security service that kind of is a plug and play? That's a very good question. I think, uh, of course, we still have ways to go until the NLP and the chatbot techniques can be very effective. But I think, uh, it, right, once it's powerful enough, I do see that that can be uh, a service either a user can employ or can be deployed by the platforms. Yeah, that's just the curious side to me on security, and we'll talk about privacy, is who gets a little bit more of the control? Who gets to you know, on, on whose side is the representative? Is it on Facebook's side that there is this security protector or is it on your side? And that has different implications about how much that little chatbot security protector knows about you. Right, so exactly. If you have a little security bot that you carry with you everywhere, mm -hmm. from Facebook to Twitter to all your services, they might it might know a lot more about you and a lot more about your relatives to be able to test those things but that's okay because you have more control of that. Right. As opposed to Facebook having that. That's a really interesting trade-off. 